the transition that we're trying to create in this one key movement is starting your downswing sooner. Starting your downswing sooner. And the best way I've found to train this, and I've talked with other coaches at length about this, is having the club head only be about hip high before you're starting your downswing sequence. I wanna to talk to you today about live view golf. Now you guys hear me say all the time that you need feedback when you're practicing. You need to know if you're actually doing what you're trying to do. And the best way to give yourself feedback ultimately is video. And not only is video the best way to give yourself feedback, but being able to see yourself simultaneously as you're doing a movement is the best form of video feedback. It's the best way I've seen to make changes in your swing and be able to correlate the differences between your feels and your reels. Live view is super easy to use and set up. Simply set it up behind or in front of you. You connect it with your iPad or phone, pop that on the ground. You can actually do your practice, see yourself as you're doing it, the best way to expedite your process. I encourage you guys to check out Live View Golf. We'll put a link in the description down below with a coupon code. Hey guys, Eric here back up at the Bethlehem Golf Club. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the most important transition move in your golf swing and how to really improve the sequencing, which is most important. Also guys, as you're watching this, if you could just take one little moment, click that gray little thumbs up button that really helps support our channel, I would really genuinely appreciate that. Uh, in today's video, right, the transition move and the one move that's most important for your transition, what I wanna show you is the drill that I do all the time with players to help them improve their transition and sequence. And here's how it works. And I was working with someone, we're doing an in-person video not long ago, and this comes up a lot with players who have too long of a swing and we're trying to essentially shorten it up, right? Players that get too long for whatever reason that have issues in transition and we're trying to shorten it up, but the same thing works really well to improve your uh, sequencing. So here's how it works. I want you to take a club, and I've got a nine iron here. You can do this with like a short to mid iron. And I want you to hit the first ball where you make a backswing and a follow through and take your hands back to hip high through to hip high. Now, that's a feeling, right? I might go a little longer than hip high, hip high. That's okay. The feeling is that I'm going hip high, hip high. So my nine iron here might go, we'll call it 100 yards, right? So let's take here. I'm going to go back hip high, hip high, and I'm going to hit this first one 100 yards. And you'll see on the second ball, where I'm going with this. So hip high, hip high. Yeah, and that's what feels like hip high, hip high to me. And that ball carried maybe 105 from there. Now here's the, here's the key to this. On this next swing, I'm gonna still have my backswing go only hip high, but from my hip high backswing, I'm gonna make a full follow through. Okay, so swing one was hip high, hip high. Swing two is hip high back, full follow through. It'll look like this. I'm gonna feel hip high and then all the way full. Hip high back, full follow through. I'll explain why this works in a minute. Good. Now that's my nine iron with what felt like a hip high backswing into a full follow through. That probably went 150. Now I hit my nine iron full like 155, okay? So five yards off approximately. Now, did I probably went a little higher than hip high, and that's okay, it's part of the point. But the transition that we're trying to create in this one key movement is starting your downswing sooner. Starting your downswing sooner. And the best way I've found to train this, and I've talked with other coaches at length about this, is having the club head only be about hip high before you're starting your downswing sequence. Now, of course, some players already swing too short and they need to do things to lengthen out the backswing. I get that. This obviously will work really good if you're someone who's super long, but even if you're too short already, you need to go longer, to learn the sequencing, the shifting, how you start the downswing, it's as good as it gets. So let me give you some more details here. So again, we'll go through it one more time. So hip high, hip high on the first one. Not trying to do anything fancy here, just get a feel for that sort of swing length. Good, so hip high, hip high, and again, that's probably about 100. Now, when I go from hip high on the way back into my full follow through, I'm trying to, once I feel my hands get to hip high, swing as fast as I can into the follow through. So I'm adding as much speed as I can control as soon as my hands hit hip high, as much speed as I can into a full follow through. 
And that's really the secret as to why that works so good. Because when my, that went, that probably went 155, 160, right? Some of you guys have seen the float load videos we did before, which of course were YouTube titles, like one drill to fix your entire swing and other float load videos. But the premise works the same way. And try this out for yourself. I'm telling you, record it, look in the mirror when you do it. Now the float load, we took back to hip high and paused. And from a pause spot, swing as fast as you can. And guess what? That works equally as effective. If you want to substitute the flow load for this, perfectly fine. But some people will like this better because you don't have to worry about the pause. But when I go back and I get the club only to hip high and I create as much speed as possible, guess what happens? All of the good things in a golf swing that I want. The swing starts from the ground up. Even though my brain's saying swing the club fast, that starts with my feet. My pressure's pushing into my left foot. I start to get some pelvis rotation. My rib cage rotates. Everything works from ground up. I'm really feeling like I'm pushing into and out of my left foot. The pelvis and hips are rotating now. All that's happening without me having to think about it because all I'm trying to do is get the club moving as fast as possible. The reason why it works so good when we're only hip high is because I've eliminated all the SHIT stuff that happens later on in my swing that creates issues when I come down. How many times I see a player go up, they have issues from here to the top that creates issues earlier on. The shaft gets steep, the face gets open, too much forearm rotation, wrist angles. I'm taking all that out of play so your brain has nothing fighting against it to be able to do all these good sequences. That's why it works so good. And for me to create so much speed from here, I have to recruit all my big muscles. I go all the way up here with my arms and hands and I can start throwing my arms in. I feel like I got a lot of stored power. From here, it's like I got no power. I gotta really get going with my body. And that's how you get these transition moves. So let's do that one more time. And I'm doing this with a nine iron. I would do this with like a nine iron, right? I would keep this short. Do the same principles apply to all clubs? Absolutely. But I would practice this short before you start going long. So we'll go hip high, hip high on the first one. I always like you doing this first one just to get a feel for what that actual length is. I find when we do, that might've been a little far. It's probably one, no, it's pretty good, 100. When we do the hip high, hip high first, I know you have the feel. If we remove the hip high, hip high, and I say, hey, just go hip high full, we haven't really got a sense of where hip high really is at. So do that first one in there. Now I've done that, I'm gonna go hip high full. And again, I'm feeling like once my hands get to hip high, I'm gonna swing as fast as I can, create as much speed as I can from there through. And that lines up. You guys can't see those ball flights, but that's as good as I can hit it. I mean, that's gonna be full distance. Yeah, I mean, that had to be 160. It might have been farther than normal. Why is that farther than normal? Because when I'm trying to create speed from the short place, I recruit all of my big muscles, my glutes, my legs, my core, rib cage, and all that. So what I would do, if you're struggling with your transition, you're struggling with compression, you're struggling to get your downswing correct, is take out the second half of your backswing just in practice. Do this to the point where you hit this really solid. And then how do you transition this into a normal swing? Well, I do the same exact thing but I'm gonna go hip high, record it, and see where I'm actually at. A lot of you guys and gals, when you feel hip high, I bet you'll be more like shoulder high. You'll be chest high, shoulder high. It'll probably be a three quarter swing by itself. So in a normal swing, you might only feel, hey, once my hands get about hip high, rib cage, chest high, that's when I can start going down. Your arms and hands are gonna keep going up just out of pure momentum. And so you shouldn't have to, um, there's not a lot of transition between this and a normal. We'll do one more just for good luck, hip high, hip high. Good. And, and that's sort of how I would answer, you know, how you transition to full is see where this actually is when you feel hip high. So this will be hip high full. And see how far off your full swing you actually are. And if you hit the ball a lot better and a lot farther, heck, you could make that sort of sensation. You could go play golf right like that. So that's how I do the transition. I use this a lot. It works really good. Give it some time. Use it as part of your warm up. If you guys enjoyed this video, we're going to put the link on for the float load video card on the screen. We'll also put a card to congornogolf.com. We'd love to see you there.